Hello everyone, welcome to Gyandeep, a channel where you get to know everything about data science. Okay, so we are on to this specific topic of named entity recognition and relation extraction. In the previous six videos, I have covered some of the very important aspects of NER and RE. We have started with the basics of NER and RE. And then we also did some bit of the data labeling through Label Studio. We use this data to do the custom NER model using SPACI, SPACI transformer, and then the transformer. In the previous session, we talked about refer, and I showed you the mechanics behind it. So essentially how to operationalize it when you are using it for the first time. In this specific session, I'm going to talk about the refer model in a little bit more detail, right? So we get to know the theoretical aspects behind uh, the refer model, and then uh, we'll con conclude this entire video series by understanding the dynamics of, uh, or mechanics rather, of the another state-of-the-art model called Ribbon. Okay, so let's start with uh, the relation extraction through the uh, refer. Here is how the refer architecture looks like. Before that, uh, the full form of refer, as we noted in the previous session, is representation iterative fusion based on heterogeneous graph neural network for joint entity and relation extraction. So it essentially does the joint entity and the relation extraction and uh, it is based on heterogeneous graph neural network and it has got a representation iterative fusion we'll we'll get to know about these specific terms in the next few slides at a high level the paper talks about uh, this architecture where we have uh, 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 five very important steps involved I'm going to talk about each of these steps in the coming slides. Okay, and so I will keep visiting that specific, specific slide where I refer to each of these steps and then we talk about these steps in detail in each individual slide. Okay, so the first step is encoding the word node. Well, what it does is given a sentence X in the training set the authors, they use the pre-trained BERT model to encode the context information. They take all the token embeddings in the last hidden layer of BERT as the word nodes. And this gives us the N word nodes. So you'll find that we have the uh, word representations W1, W2 and WN and these tokens and they get encoded by uh, using the BERT encoder and that gives us the word nodes represented by H1, H2 to Hn. Okay, so then uh, coming back to our slide. So then the next step is on the step two and uh, that involves encoding the relation node. The authors then embed each predefined relation level as the high dimensional vector and pass through a linear mapping layer after embedding. So they create the uh, embeddings out of uh, this, these different relation levels that might be there. And then they pass it through the linear mapping layer. Now, what are these uh, linear mapping layer? So a linear mapping layer is after the embedding could look like this. So you have the input, which is nothing but the embedded words. And uh, there could be a linear function, or this could be a matrix multiplication, could include the bias terms, etc. And that would give you the output or the processed word, which could be the uh, linear, linearly mapped uh, word representation, or the relation in representation in this case. So this finally gives us the uh, m different relation nodes, uh, as in here. So we have. Uh, the uh, different relations here, R1, R2 to Rm, they have the relation embedding here, the step two and the linear mapping layer, like we saw earlier. And that gives us the relation nodes R1, R2 to Rm. Fine, so that was our step two. 
moving further. The next step uh, essentially involves a heterogeneous graph network layer. So before I can get into the workings of the refer and how it uses the heterogeneous graph network, let's first try to understand the concept. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, node one. There are five different nodes essentially, and uh, node one, if we see, it's connected directly connected to two num node number two, three, and four, and it's indirectly connected to node number five through node number two. It is connected, right? So there is uh, mm, a message uh, exchange mechanism uh, which is inbuilt with uh, the heterogeneous graph networks. So wherein the, uh, say for example, node one has the, got the embeddings of uh, X1, X2 to XM. Similarly, node two has got the embedding X1, X2 to XM uh, as in blue. And similarly for node three and node four, the blue colored embeddings that you see and the yellow color embeddings for node five. Now, as part of the message exchange, what happens is, uh, uh, there is an aggregation of the values involved for all the neighboring nodes, right? So, so essentially uh, H2, H3, and H4, which are nothing but node 2, node 3, and node 4, in their time space, which is uh, uh, the kth time space uh, uh, that they have been represented with these embedding values of X1 to Xm, right? They undergo aggregation. Now, this aggregation could be a mean, max, it could be any other function through which the values get aggregated. And the H1, which is the node 1, wherein which is right now receiving the messages from node 2, 3, 4, it gets updated, right? So now we find H1 in the time space K plus 1, which has now got uh, the uh, uh, the values of uh, uh, from the uh, node 2, 3, 4 as represented in the blue color. Okay, so this is now an iterative process. Okay, so towards the right side and top, uh, the another, uh, so if you look into that figure, then we find that uh, in the first uh, iteration, we have the uh, embedding values uh, for node 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of them have been uh, updated, right? And uh, although still node 1 is not having the values of uh, node 5, right? So it doesn't actually have any representation from node 5. But then in the next iteration, what happens is it also gets the uh, representation or the values from, from node 5 because node two at this point or uh, in the K plus two uh, time space has got the values from node five, right? So this is an iterative process and eventually after two iterations, uh, the H1 node or the node one essentially uh, gets to have a much better representation or much better word representation, right? So that's what the authors explain and say that uh, uh, is the uh, the primary driving factor even in the refer model. Okay, now let's see further as to how refer applies this. Okay, so here as we can see, we have uh, uh, the R1, R2, R3, and these are the relations different relations related nodes. So what happens in uh, case of refer is uh, uh, if you read the first bullet point, given two types of the semantic nodes representation, it regards all nodes of one type as neighbors of each other type of the node. Okay, so each word node will have all the relations node as its neighbors. Assume that there are three different relations, uh, relations node, then there is a, uh, the graph attention uh, 
related weight alpha 1 1 alpha 1 2 alpha 1 3 to the word node h1 right and uh, the value of alpha essentially determines as to how strongly the relations are uh, how strong are the relations right to the h1 the h1 node through the heterogeneous graph uh, uh, and the message ex exchange mechanism that we saw in the previous slide it gets updated and hence we have uh, something called the h1 and uh, the h1 tilled uh, and what you see on the another uh, box blue colored box right and uh, so once uh, so what happens in case of refer is uh, uh, you have your word nodes getting updated and then the uh, updated representation of the word nodes is essentially passed to the relation representation and the relation representation is then further updated so we have h1 tilt, h2 tilt, and s3 tilt. Now they again passing the information or message to uh, the R1, uh, R1 being the relationship or relation node, and the relation node getting updated. Okay, so uh, if we were to understand this through the example, we have this one provided by the paper itself. So we have American test pilot Alan Shepard died in California and uh, the respective tokens, word tokens are here and the relation token relations are provided here like the death place occupation and the leader name and uh, each of these uh, relations are, are then connected or sharing the messages with the uh, with all the word tokens right american test pilot and so it's essentially connected to each of the word tokens okay and uh, this one essentially says the message and uh, the word related node gets updated and then once that update has happened then uh, the relation nodes are also updated by the updated representation of the word node this is called the iterative fusion and uh, the authors claim that uh, this is a much better representation of the embeddings and as a result the uh, this enhanced representation of the embeddings is able to overcome the problems of entity pair overlap single entity overlap etc and results into a very good accuracy fine so next we move to uh, so that was in fact uh, okay going back to our original slide so this one is essentially the heterogeneous so step number three is the heterogeneous graph layer and what we then get is the after updated nodes so we have the updated h1 h2 to hn and the updated r1 to r1 r2 to rm now we see that there is a line going from h1 h2 to hn to subject tagger and uh, then it is also connected to uh, srh we'll get to know about it and uh, then relation node is then connected to srh which is then fed to object tagger now with that in mind now let's come back to our slide which and understand the next few steps Okay, so now the step four. So the final representations of the word nodes and relation nodes is used for the joint entity entity relation extraction. The subject tagger it detects the all possible subjects in the word nodes. Okay, so the uh, updated representation of the uh, word nodes as we saw, and uh, that was going into the subject tagger. So this subject tagger would essentially detect all possible subjects in the word node and specifically it has uh, two binary classifiers which is start, which detect the start and the end position of the subject in the word node okay so now that we have the subjects identified then it combines each word node right a candidate node and candidate subject node and sorry candidate subject 
and each relation node to prepare for the next step of detection the detecting the object okay so that was uh, essentially uh, this one mm, s r h which i referred to so my s is essentially the uh, the candidate subject that we got in the subject tagger r is the relations the updated relations that we had from post the heterogeneous graph layer and h is the updated uh, uh, updated word notes that we had after heterogeneous graph layer so we have s r h now this is used for the purposes of getting the uh, getting the object the object let's now learn about the object tagger so the object tagger it optimizes the likelihood function uh, so there is a specific likelihood function that they have provided and the object tagger it essentially optimizes this to determine the object span o given a sentence x uh, a subject s and a relation r okay so now we have the uh, subject and the object identified for the relation i classification task given the sentence x with the annotated entity pairs s and o authors then aim to identify the relations between s and o using a multi layer perceptron model so they use mlp or the multi layer perceptron trained to obtain the predicted values of all the relations so uh, so once the uh, detection of the entities has happened s and o then uh, essentially the model or the paper uses a multi layer perceptron to get all the relations that probabilities for all the possible relations and the one with the highest probability is essentially uh, stated to be the relations between the subject and the object so these are the various steps involved in the in the refer model and uh, like i stated it does a very decent job and uh, i have used it personally on several of the projects uh, for joint entity uh, extraction as well as the relation extraction and even for such purposes where uh, we had to just identify the relations between the entities and uh, we use some other model to sort of get the entities and then we just passed it through the refer to get the uh, uh, the relations and uh, it has worked really well for our purposes in the next session we'll be talking about yet another state of the art model for relation extraction it's called ribbon and we'll understand how it works and we'll also see the demo the mechanics behind it and we'll get to know uh, the entire workings behind the ribbon model in the coming video thank you thanks for your time